So if you're getting the fault where either it's really erratic or the numbers just keep going up and down, uh, it won't hold a stable speed while you're using the potentiometer. Uh, even some of them aren't going to their maximum or their minimum speeds anymore. What we need to do is we need to replace this which is the potentiometer but it comes with the board it's all one piece soldered together which is directly behind this so first things first disconnect your power and uh, it says to wait for five minutes even in the manual it says to wait for ten it's easier just to wait for ten to do this you'll need a replacement of these and if if you got the drive from me all I need is the serial number which is located on the side just a picture of that and then I'll start the process through Tico to get a new one of these also need a Phillips screwdriver number two and a 10 millimeter uh, open end spanner now what we can do first up is pull our little knob off that just pulls off with a bit of force and with the 10mm spanner you should just be able to loosen the nut holding your um, little nut and there's um, I've already mucked around with this one so that one is missing the washer um, there's a, a washer and a little sealing ring in there as well, a little rubber ring. We will also need a small pair of uh, side cutters and a small cable tie as well. But now that this, the drive's been off for 10 minutes, all the capacitors have discharged. So those screws won't fall out, they're captive. You just need to open this up. And first thing is this black cord. It's got like a telephone jack plug in the back of it. Just pull that off and you can you can tip that back so you can get to it. You'll see that there's the potentiometer and there's just four screws on the back of this. Um, this potentiometer looks a bit different. It's one that I've repaired from a bad board. I, I swapped this one out with someone that needed one quite quickly. Um, yeah. It's as easy as that. That board is out, so then you then take this one out. If um, once again, if you got it from me and I've sent you a replacement, it would be great to get the old ones back, uh, so I can send them back to Tico and uh, finalise the, the warranty claim from my end. Um, but yeah, that's about all there is to it. Uh, to install the new one, it's the same in reverse. It's Hold that in place. Just don't over tighten them, just a little bit of tension, that's all it needs. 
and there's usually a cable tie on this white clip in here just to hold the wires to but it's not necessary and you line up a um you'll see on the bottom right here there's a small tab small part sticking up that stops it from rotating there's a small hole there's a small hole right here that that little that little leg sticks into so hold your potentiometer in there put your rubber seal on first then the washer and then the nut and just get that in there And 10 mil spanner, just do it up tight enough. Plug in our black telephone cord. If you want it to click, just give it a little tug, make sure it's make sure it's in there. The six screws on the front of your box. I like to turn it all the way to uh, turn it all the way to the left, and I put the dot in the spot where I like it. Really makes zero difference. Then we can plug it back in. Switch it on, and make sure it's fixed. This is the workaround to the issue. So while you're waiting for your parts, uh, this is something that's gonna let you keep using your grinder as it should be used. So this potentiometer is working. As you can see, it stays on the setting where, it get, where we leave it. We're gonna use the keypad uh, to uh, turn off the potentiometer. So pressing the function button, the DSP FUN, until it shows 0000. zero, zero, zero. We need to change that to show 0005. That's the program for the potentiometer. So when it says that, press the enter key and it should show a one. We wanna change that to a zero. So push the down arrow, hit enter again. It should say end. If it doesn't say end, you, uh, it hasn't worked and you gotta go through it again. Now hit the function button two more times and it takes us back to our speed. Now you see the potentiometer does nothing, it's completely disconnected from its circuit. Now the speed's adjusted using the up and down. So while it's like this and the whole thing is flashing, it just moves that last digit, but we can use the left arrow key to select a higher number. This lets us change the speed a lot faster um, because changing it one single unit at a time would take a very long time. So we're just going to set them at zeros and now we can adjust the hundreds each push of the button changes it by a hundred feet per minute and we can even move it to the thousand just for very fast changes and that between the minimum and maximum speeds showing there now after you've selected your speed you hit the enter button and push the use the start and stop as you normally would so here we've selected seven and a half thousand well, I think we bumped it by digits so we're just bumping it up by two so while it's currently running we're going to drop it down by a few thousand push the enter button again and you'll see it change. It'll only, while it's running, it'll only change speed once you hit the enter key. It won't just, it won't keep following your, um, your buttons. So 
it takes a while, drops down, and it holds it right on. So using that left arrow again, moving it up by just a few hundred feet per minute, press enter, and it goes to it. It's slightly clumsier this way. It's not nearly as fast as just turning the dial, but it gets it functioning and it stops it from being erratic and uh, those that have lost the top speed on their machine, this brings that back. Um, firstly, I'd just set it fast and leave it there. Um, when you do get your new potentiometer, uh, the process to reverse this programming is the opposite of what we just did. So hit the function button get 0005, it should be showing a zero. We have to just push the up key, change it to one, press enter, make sure it says end, push the function button twice, and we're back to how it was before. I hope this has been helpful. I hope this gets your issue sorted. Uh, don't forget if you do have a drive from me, from one of my grinders or anything else, make sure you contact me and I'll get you the replacement part sorted out. But thanks for watching, leave a comment if you're not sure, or contact me for any questions.